What's going on? Yesterday, well, actually today, after lunch, I had a healthy lunch, I was looking at the comments and I saw some pushback on the video I did yesterday. And it, I didn't even mention, well, I did mention that, you know, marrying the best woman for you, whatever that may be. And there was some comments that was like, is it wrong to be culturally loyal? And that got me to thinking, see, if you don't know, most black men who are married are married to black women. That's going on right now. But what also is going on right now? The degeneration of the culture. So marrying black women is not going to solve anything because that's already happening and we still have these problems. So that's false. And I want to bring you the story of Patrick Mahomes, the Super Bowl winning quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. His father was a professional baseball player and his father got up with this white woman and had three kids. And as far as I know, they're still together. Patrick Mahomes was raised to be rich. Now, part of the fence around black America is because, you know, the, the pushback and the limitations is like, it's got to be black. It's got to be black. It's got to be black. I got to marry. That, that's just not going to work because you're in the United States of America. You're not in Africa. You're in the United States of America. And the rule of the land is what works in the United States of America. And this comes back to the case of Patrick Mahomes Jr., Patrick Mahomes II, as I to believe he's called, who was raised to be rich. His father was a professional baseball player and Patrick Mahomes just signed this $400 million 10 year contract with the Kansas City Chiefs. This was not an accident. See, if you know anything about sports that like, give me an example. When I used to work a job, I was worked for this company and this guy's kids were on this traveling hockey team. And this was the nineties. It was like $2,000 per month. These guys were just playing hockey, $2,000 per month. See, if you know anything about sports, Patrick Mahomes II got the best coaching, the best athletic camps. Cause see, you're not going to get to D1 unless you're just extremely talented. There are some guys who are raw, have just extreme levels of raw talent and they make it to D1. But there's another portal for guys who are getting into D1, division football, D1 basketball. They're going through these camps and these camps are not cheap. These camps could be two to $5,000 per month. And this is what Patrick Mahomes went through. He went through these camps. Why did he do this? Because his father had the money to send him to these camps. See, Patrick Mahomes, you know, many people would feel that like, oh, you know, he just got lucky or no, no, no. This was just part of the plan of the programming that did not involve black culture. Patrick Mahomes, you see him, you know, he doesn't act like, quote, a black dude because, you know, he's biracial. He's part black, part white, but he doesn't have any of that, those qualities. If I would say Travis Kelsey has more black attributes than Patrick Mahomes with the swag and the dancing and all the stuff on the, on the sidelines. And this is what to just show you the harmfulness. Cause like many of you are not hearing me cause it's like, you know, what's wrong with being proud and black? You walk through the door with your blackness. And I have a question for you. How much money has your blackness put into your pocket? Seriously, because I keep hitting people. It's like, you know, well, you we feel to forget to get the bag. I ain't saying anything about forgetting. I don't forget any of my ancestors or the loyal people, the great people who brought me up. I don't forget them. I acknowledge them. They're not forgotten, but I don't walk through the door with my blackness. And that's the point that so many of you refuse to accept. Like you, you, you don't get it because you are so steeped 
in the blackness that you can't see your face in the mirror because this is such a strong part of who you are. And let's get into identity. Do you wanna be a successful man or do you wanna be a successful black man? Be really, really careful with how you answer that question. Because if you wanna be a successful man, that is a different path than being a successful black man. Yes, it is. Because to be a successful black man, we talked about it the other day, there is more accolades given to people who come up through the streets, who go to prison, who have a certain level of high, a high level of blackness than giving to you if you are quote, the educated lame. I saw some of your comments that I, where the message, because I knew the message would resound very well with you guys because you guys have lived it, you have walked it, and you have dealt and interacted with more earthy, more street, more black hood culture blacks, and you found out that it was different. Like I, there was one comment about Kelly Stamps and talking about her swirling. I was just sitting there like, you know, Kelly can date whoever she wants. This is a problem. This is the Jill Scott paradigm. Well, you know, you, I have a problem with brothers for dating white women. Now, you, you know what's funny? You know what group of women, a group that dates out of their race the most is Asian women. And there was a talk about Indians and how Indians married Indian women and not where I live. I know of many Indian women who are not married to Indian men around here. So part of this is proximity and culture. If you are just in the street, hood, ghetto, and all of your people are there, that's all you know. You don't know of any other thing. And a lot of you are commenting on this stuff, you don't know of any other thing. Because one of the things is, in 1988, I went to Japan and I was treated very well by the Japanese people. We were out in public, we interacted with some Japanese soldiers, never had a problem, never felt any tension. They were cool, we had fun. Here in 2015, YouTubers are putting up videos talking about how racist the Japanese people are. And I'm like, wait a minute, I've been to Japan. I interacted with the Japanese people. They were not racist. And this brings up another issue. Black folks are too damn sensitive. It's like, if someone looks at you just a little cockeyed, then all of this stuff comes up. I mean, it's crazy, because I'm sitting there like, I was in Japan. I didn't experience any racism. I experienced nothing but love and acceptance. But part of that is me and how I go into situations. There are many black folks who enter a situation with non-black folks with a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, I'm the black man. Yeah, I'm the black chick. That is not going to be conducive to fellowship, grooming, and meeting, and making friends. And a lot of you don't care, because it's like, we're going to go ahead and talk about the reparations argument. There are many black folks who feel that we are owed reparations. I myself do not feel that we're owed reparations because I was never a slave. I don't know of anyone that was a slave. My mother wasn't a slave. My grandfather wasn't a slave. So as for the reparations, I don't feel that I'm owed them. I know that's going to go against Hotep Nation and everything. That, oh yeah, here's some money. And also, if reparations were handed out, the money would be back where it came from within a matter of weeks. Why? Because most black folks are not financially literate. Yeah, I said that. Prime example, Omni and the Hellcat. He had $50 million and you see what happened. He didn't know what to do with the money. He didn't know how to park the money. He didn't know how to seg the money. He didn't know how to protect the money. And the money just disappeared, went to the government, went where it is. And you will see this. So one of the things that you got to understand is about proximity, about culture and intentions. Patrick Mahomes Sr. married this white woman, got with her and raised a millionaire. How many millionaires 
that are coming out of the black culture. You'll have, uh, I forget his name, uh, he used to play for the clip for the Golden State Warriors, then Kevin Durant. You, you will have someone with such amazing, raw, massive athletic talent that will matriculate up to those levels. And really, if you look at it from a percentage point, like right now, there's probably 100,000 young men playing D, you know, basketball in, in high school. And what that's going to drill down to is out of those 100,000 people who are playing basketball in high school, that's going to drill down to 10,000 for D1 college basketball. And then that's going to drill down to a few dozen players who make it to the NBA. Same thing with the NFL. Right now, there are thousands of kids who are paying high school football. And then there's going to be like, it's going to drill down to 10,000 at the D1 level. And it's going to drill down to like literally dozens at the pro level. And there is so much attention paid to these people and the money that they make that these folks are unicorn. If you are playing in the NFL or an NBA or Major League Baseball, you are a unicorn. You're not a normal person. You're not a normal person. You know what the odds of a kid who was born six years old, he would start playing rookie Pee Wee League football for him to go from Pee Wee football to the NFL. The odds are staggering against him making it. Staggering. But this is the flavor because when you're an NBA player, NFL player, or major league baseball player or a professional athlete, you get a lot of visibility. But the reality is that most black men marry black women and that has not solved the damn thing. We still have all these problems. The lowest number of business ownership. And that's one I, that really bugs me because let's go ahead and go on the Hotep Nation way. Racism abounds. All white people are racist. All white people out to get you. Why are you working the job with these white people? Why, why, why aren't you starting the business? See, this is one of this is one of the things that bugs me. I hear all of this. We need reparations. I hear racism. We can't. But you don't set yourself apart by starting your own business and creating your own economy and circling your money in your own economy. See. There's what you say and there's what you do. And I don't see, cause you know what? This is what set me off on my entrepreneur journey. I was working for this company and one Monday, you know, uh, Ken Scott was talking about Jim was an owner. And then I walked in the room when he said that, cause I heard what he said and I sat down and the room got real quiet and tight. And I was like, I'm out of here, but I weighed my options because I'm not one of these sensitive black men that, you know, a sensitive black man would have like threw papers down, walked out, quit. Oh God, they're racist up in there. I didn't do that. I was a black man with a plan. I was like, okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna take me some customers, I'm gonna build me a portfolio and I'm gonna leave at, you know, when it's appropriate. And then I storm out in a fit of anger, a hostility. And six months, almost seven months later, I left and I left with customers and I left with money. See, that is a response to racism. It's called action. And I'm hearing all this stuff in the comments, but how many of you have started your own business? How many of you have created your own economy? I'm talking to the folks. I'm not talking to the folks who love and support this content, love and support. I'm not talking to you guys, you guys get it. I am talking to all of the hotel people with black culture, black pride. Why haven't you started your own business in this completely racist white society? Why haven't you started your own business? Please put that comment in the comment. I don't want to hear no stuff like, well, you need, no, no, no. I didn't, when I quit my job, I had money in the bank, but I didn't need money to run my business. See, this, this is one of the things. Cause see, when you experiment and when you, um, go out into the world, you understand. I all, because one day when I was working and this was after I did one of my biggest deals ever, it dawned upon me because I had a check for half a million dollars up in my shirt pocket. 
The only thing they knew about me was I had a cell phone and a business card. That was it. And me going ahead and knocking on the door and talking to them and showing them to some showrooms and going ahead and giving them pricing information. I got this big ass deal and that's the only thing they knew about me. That's the only thing they knew about me. I didn't need money. I needed action. I needed hustle. I needed drive. So miss me with this when we need, no, no, no. Cause see, if you leave one of these hotep comments below and you're working a job for the quote, white man you are living a life of duality because on one side i'm hotel nation yeah but in the reality and the practical application of your life you you just an average dude in america with a job by a white man because see this this is one of the things that get me because all you guys be saying all the stuff about black pride why don't you have your own enterprise why don't you have your own business Oh, that's right, because you want weekends off and you want to go home, you want to go to work, come home and chill. Huh. So the white supremacy isn't pressing enough upon you to start a business, but it's pressing enough upon you to leave these jacked up comments all over my content. Hmm. See, this is the duality. This is the the fault. This is the facade that you guys are putting up. Because if it was so bad to live in an oppressive white supremacist country, why don't you leave? Why don't you start a business? See, there's what you say and there's what you do. And I'm not seeing the action based upon the comments. And like I said, you know, marry whoever you want. You know, if you find someone that loves you, that you can make a life with, make a family with, that's a beautiful thing, regardless of who it may be. I don't really care. I'm just putting in your heads that the limited thinking that you were unaware that you have, I'm telling you, it's limited thinking. It's limited. And with limited thinking leads to a limited life. It leads to issues and problems. But once again, just go ahead for all you hotel nation folks, for all the folks who come over here, well, you know, you can be happy, you can be proud, but there's you, because you know, someone brought this, you know, Indians managed to get the money and keep their culture. You know what Indian culture is? This is a big problem, and don't believe me, Google it. One of the biggest problems they have in India is people taking a crap in the street and using the bathroom in the streets. It is a big problem. That is Indian culture. That you're so much like, oh, it's been black culture. Indians are squatting in the streets, taking the dump. Big, big problem. It's a sanitation issue and that the government's really working on it to get people to stop doing this. That's what they're doing. Indian culture. So, a big part of this is, and the reason I do these videos is to expose to you what could be versus what is. And just like Patrick Mahomes' father, who was a major league baseball player, got with this white woman and they produced a millionaire. You will see that over and over and over again. But in a black family with limited resources, you don't really see that. You know, it's a beautiful story that the ESPN loves to show a single mom, the kid made it to the pros. And they love that story because it's so rare. It's so rare. It is so rare that you see that and they love it. And it feeds this narrative that, oh, yeah, the single mom could raise a, raise a, a NFL quarterback. And the reality is, if you look at most of the skilled positions and you look at a lot of these dudes' parents, most of them come from parents like uh, Joe Burrow. What did we see all last year? Joe Burrow's mom and dad up in the stands. We saw that all last year. Tua, Alabama. What did we see? Mom and dad. The most successful athletes over and over again come from two-parent households. Over and over again. I've been seeing this for years. Like you, you'll see a player, oh, this is Sundown's mom and dad's. Over and over and over, because the, the two parent homes, household provides stability. And like I said, you gotta have some money to send your kids to these camps. 
because if your kid has athletic prowess and you go ahead and get them in these camps early, that is going to optimize and maximize their athletic skills. A lot of players from Duke went to camps. Grant Hill, his father, Calvin Hill, played for the Dallas Cowboys. His mother was an attorney. You see this over and over and over again, but you know, Grant Hill, he's an educated lame. So what if he graduated from Duke and went on to the NBA to become a millionaire? Eh, we miss him. Show me someone that went to prison and came out and started a business. That's the kind of action that I want to see. You know, bump Grant. Because if you've noticed, um, Fab Five, I forget his name, but he's a commentator on ESPN, basketball commentator. Uh, I think it's something, Jalen Rose or something like that. And he actually said for the longest he hated Grant Hill. And for the person that was trying to check me, Grant, you know, the Fat Five lost to Duke. I remember that game because I was rooting for Michigan and they lost to Duke because they were not fundamentally sound, which is part of this conversation. Fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. Next, you know, pro season, like we'll see what happens this year. But next time you're watching college football and there's a standout player and they pan to his parents, notice how many times he has parents not a parent, but he has parents over and over and over. The stability of a two parent household, Trump's single motherhood left and right. But once again, part of the black politic, there was a professor who said that children born in a single black mother household did better than children born in a two. She actually, she actually went there, which is part of the black culture and the fence around black culture because they're saying things that are statistically not true statistically it ain't true you go ahead and do the read the stats look at you know um one of the biggest reasons that so many men go to prison is daddy was not there that's one of the biggest reasons so many young boys get in trouble and end up in prison because they did not have a father in their life Statistically, Google, Google it. And also based upon test scores from third grade reading levels, they were building prisons because they knew what people were gonna do. Well, you can't get a job. You can't occupy in this part of society. So we're gonna go to this other part of society and we're going to commit crimes and we're gonna be about that street life. Remember when I was talking about the Wall Street Trapper and when he came here to Atlanta, he was working on the dome and he was making $10,000 a month, that was comparable to money he made illegally. He was like, yeah, I'm good. This is kind of the same kind of money I was making selling drugs. $10,000 a month. That should tell you something there. Go ahead, check out his video uh, where he did this um, interview with David Never Sleeps. It's well watched and he's an entertaining fella. And he talks, he speaks the truth. He, he tells the truth and he was like, man, I was like, you know, he talks about his new life. Like he doesn't have to look over his shoulder. He ain't worried about anything. He's able to get money. See, he's evolving as a person and he's trying to bring other people along with him, which is a good thing. But the whole black culture, the fence thing is no good. I don't care how many times y'all can argue with me. Y'all can come up in the comments and bring it up because you should lead with your masculinity. You should lead with being a man and you should be effective. If you go into a situation, like I used to watch The Apprentice and there was this one sister who wanted to do some stuff for the people in Harlem. And I knew immediately she was gonna lose the contest because that, that, that had nothing to do with the contest, the rules and regulations. You know, I was just sitting there but once again, there's this whole notion like, you know, when I was in the West End, I had this vision of buying up these homes and leaving the elderly people in these homes and then taking over the home once they passed on. And I, I actually talked to people about it. Nobody was interested. See, th this is the thing. When it comes down to doing the work of building up the black politic, the culture, people don't want to do the work. People are not interested because it's going to take sacrifice.
time, effort, and money. And folks just wanna do it. They just wanna live their best life. Just their best life, whatever that may be. But that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to go below and get 30 days to 2,500. Be sure to go below, get the hustler's mindset, pimp your mind for success. And also an update on the oxygen banking app. They do not offer credit. I was in contact with someone, so I got to do a review over there on Savage Finance, but it's a pretty slick banking app and I'm going to pretty much make it my main banking app for personal, my personal banking, because I really like it. But go ahead and get that, hit that referral link. I get 25 bucks, you get 25 bucks. And after you fund your account to the tune of 200 bucks and use the debit card five times. So that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to watch this next video.